Hey, good friends, how are you going? Nice to see you again, thank you for joining me. Mark Hummer, of course, here, and we're going to be talking about photography. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about videography, we're going to talk about some LED lighting and some details, which you may not have thought about, and I think it's worth revealing, uh, maybe helping you not make any unnecessary uh, undue mistakes. And uh, then we're going to talk about the batteries you use for our lighting, and very importantly, we're going to talk about my Ronin S at the back there, and whatever lighting rigs that I've just rigged up for that recently and tried out, what has succeeded and what has failed, and what I've changed recently. Now, I've uh, actually got a lot of lighting options that I can put onto the Ronin now, and I'll walk you through that very shortly. But in order to talk about that and demonstrate that properly, I'm going to need a big wide screenshot of that. I'm going to have to be standing up, so we'll do that in a few minutes. But right now, we'll just have a more intimate close-up shot where we're going to be talking about some items that I can put on my little table here and show you close up. Now, of course, anything that I demonstrate today, and I want you to see a little closer up, or well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll demonstrate with a little picture up in the corners. It might be this side or that side, depending on uh, where I'm framing everything. But have no fear, you won't be missing out on seeing uh, all the details that I'm expressing. Now, what I would like to talk about firstly today is the LED light panels that I use. And predominantly, I use a lot of uh, Aperture Ariman lighting. I like it because it's continuous LED lighting and I found it very uh, useful. It's uh, been tried and tested and it's very successful. And you get quite a lot of bang for your buck. It's not particularly expensive. It's not like first grade professional quality necessarily, but uh, it is actually very affordable and of reasonably very good quality, especially when you're gonna buy a lot of lights. So you're buying one light, okay, you're gonna spend maybe $1,000 on that one unit. But when you're buying as I do, I've got about 15 to 16 LED panels alone, and I've got eight uh, flash units. So when you're buying quantities of lighting, you can't afford to spend $1,000 a pop. So you have to be a bit more budget conscious. And I think that's just being fair and reasonable too. So what am I talking about? Well, I'll give you an illustration. Here we have a Aperture Ariman LED light panel. And as you can see from the panel, it's rows and rows of little LED beads, as you can see on the front here. So if I just uh, tilt it a little bit, you might get a better perspective of what's going on. And of course, on the back, the, you see the little uh, battery pack arrangements they have and the dials for adjusting your brightness, and etc. Now, here I have a couple of batteries that are used for these. These are the Sony type NPL batteries. They're uh, usually I use the 970 size, which is the biggest size that they come in. They do have smaller sizes too, which are lightweight and still very functional. But I tend to go with these because they just last so long. So how does these things operate? Well, what you do is you just plug the batteries in and then you turn it on and they go. So what am I going to illustrate about this very simple arrangement to you? Well, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm showing you these items because if you have a look here, you'll notice that they're all in very, very, very straight rows. Okay, so they're packing a lot of light beads into a small area, and that's how they've decided to do it from day one. And that's a fine arrangement, it works beautifully. The only disappointment with this is that when you're operating on video, of course this is gonna react very unfavorably with the sensor, because the sensor has also got its pixels in a row, very similar to this. And so if you use this sort of a light at this angle, straight into the camera, or towards the camera. What you're gonna do is you're going to have a situation where the uh, pixels in the camera are picking up these lines and you could get striping or banding in your video image. So in order to avoid that, they provide uh, diffusion panels. Now the diffusion panels provided by Aperture, they're okay, they do protect the beads from damage, but they're simply not diffused enough for my liking. Uh, it's almost non-effective at all. So as a protective panel, they're okay, but for diffusing against any sort of banding or striping issues, they're really not very good. So what I do is I've actually ripped them out. As you can see here, you don't see one in it. It's just the LED uh, bulbs exposed. So to fix this potential issue, what I do is I will devise up something for myself and I can illustrate it with these very small lights. Now these are Aperture Ariman as well and they have the same configuration of lots of little beads. But what I've done here is I've got some little diffusion panel, the sort of stuff you'll see in ceiling lights. You know, fluoro lights, they have that uh, corrugated sort of a crinkly, plastic cover on them. Well, I've got that Perspex cover, and what I've done is I've also sprayed a frosting over it. So you get a spray can of little frosting, sort of like a Christmas frosting they use on windows to decorate uh, seasonally. Well, I just use that spray over the top, and that works as a great diffuser as well. So uh, diffusion spray over the top of that already crinkled Perspex, I put that on instead of the traditional clear plastic that they provide, and it's an awesome diffusion. So I can illustrate it in these lights here for you, just to show you that it works anywhere. So here we go, we just put some batteries in. 
to here we have these Zabich Araman lights they're quite amazing you can see the strength of the light that comes out it's quite uh, bright and strong so I crank this up fully it's really intense so you can see why you would need some diffusion panel on them because they can be so intense now you don't have to run them at full power if I run them down here at about half value you can still see how this diffusion is, uh, is operating and working for you and depending on how strong you have them up that'll give you an illustration of just how much diffusion you're getting but I found that very valuable. I like very much the fact that uh, <clears throat> these uh, batteries are working. They're very universal. They'll work in these little lights. It's the same batteries that work in uh, these bigger panels as well. And uh, the same batteries that will work on this big ring light. So let me just run you through all that and I'll show you how these different lights all work with the same battery unit and how valuable that is. So when you buy some of these batteries, don't buy one or two, do what I do. I've got a, a case here of batteries. I may have shown you this before, but I'll just illustrate it again, where I don't have one or two, I've got four there, I've got several on the other lights, and I've got another like dozen in there, plus my camera batteries. And while we're talking about camera batteries, you may notice here that I have many camera batteries there. There's four just sitting on the bench here. I have one in this camera here, and one in the camera behind me. There's like six batteries just off the top of my head I can find. So when you buy batteries, never be stuck on just buying one. Always buy half a dozen of the batteries when you first set up with your lighting, because the last thing you want to do is run out of battery power or not have them when you need them or not they're not charged when you need them immediately and just be able to pull one another one out of the box that's been charged previously is great so that's something i'm going to suggest is buying lots of batteries but let me run you through this uh, big ring light which is uh, based on an aperture araman and then outside there is another brand of ring light that i found to be quite useful now i have two of these exact rigs two with a big 672 uh, aperture Araman in the middle and then uh, these ones here of about 480 beads of LED in a ring light configuration and I'll just run you through what it's all about and why I built it this way. So just let me put the microphone to one side so you'll be able to see clearly on the bench. <clears throat> so here's the unit here, let me show you from reverse first so you can see what's going on. So as you can see, I've mounted it in such a way that this uh, big ring light fortunately has this lovely little mount on it, which enables me to put the aperture Araman on. So that's brilliant, isn't it? And then I've just rigged up on the top little mount another little bracket just to keep it steady and sturdy. But you can see here from this light configuration, so what we have is it has two batteries in the aperture Araman, and then we have uh, two batteries here and here for the ring light. So let me just put them in and we'll turn it on and just show you how it all goes. So remember, I mean, it doesn't matter what brand the apparatus is, they're all gonna use these Sony batteries for the most part, and I love that. So it's having uh, various different brands of batteries and trying to configure things on the, on the fly and remembering which battery goes in which unit. If they're all universal and the same, well, isn't that just brilliant? So there you go, it's turned on for me already. So here we go, I'll just turn this around for you so you can see what's going on. So as you can see here, now this is actually at its uh, lowest setting completely. It's uh, on the uh, reading on the dial on the back of the uh on the back of the ring light, you can might be able to see there it actually says almost zero or 03, which is right down to next to nothing. On the aperture element, it's probably reading 10. 10 is actually its lowest setting. So that's actually quite a good round and soft light as it is there. Now, of course, you can turn it up as strong as you like. This is 100% on that. And if I turn this one up 100% as well, well, as you can see in this room, it's getting crazy bright, isn't it? Look how bright that is. That's insane. So really, of course, am I ever going to use it at its brightest level? You'll notice that it also has the uh, beauty. Oh, I'll just turn this off because it's getting too bright and annoying. But uh, you can see it has displays here for both uh, the strength and then also the color temperature, which is awesome. So I can change it to a more amber light if I wish that and that's necessary, or I can have it as bright white as I want. Now you can see they got both got diffusion panels on them. So this light actually comes with this nice soft diffusion panel material. This one I've had to make up because Aperture and don't have that as standard, that's very effective. So again, it's that uh, crinkle um, fluoro light cover plastic and then sprayed with the uh, the frosting. Now, just for, it may not look very beautiful, it might look a bit patchy, but of course that's irrelevant. It's only noticeable when it's off. Once it's on, the brightness of the light uh, overpowers that. But it's really just for its actual practical uh, convenience. Now, how have I got this rigged up? Well, I've got a large steel plate, as you can see here. And the idea of the large steel plate is simply to enable me to be able to put this on a bench or a tabletop uh, or even on a chair if necessary. Now, where is that useful? Well, that's really useful in a function center. So just imagine yourself here that you're videoing someone in a function center 
and you don't want a light stand li around on the floor because light stands are giant trip hazards, isn't it? And if people are getting up and down, uh, maybe it's a presentation or exchanging speakers, a uh, big light stand anywhere near them can be a real disaster. They get out of their table or chair, they walk up to the podium and trip over the light stand. They knock your light flying and they fall over. Well, that's, that's as a disaster, isn't it? Not only do you look like a nuisance and an idiot, but you've just embarrassed that person as well. So what I encourage people to do is have just this option. I have light stands, of course, and this will just mount straight onto a light stand as well. It's just a matter of undoing this thumb screw and then plonking it onto a light stand. So if I need that for a purpose, that's available. But it isn't it great to have these steel plates with a light stand attachment on it so I can just pop that straight on and put it on a bench or a table somewhere and have a safe means of moving the light. Because if you imagine this is like a giant dining table and this is the end of the table, you can put the light here facing the subject that you're filming and it's on the table. It's no worse or a hazard than a pitcher of water or uh, you know a large beer or something. No one's going to knock that over any more than they would this. People are careful when it's on the table. And also this steel plate weighs a ton. You're not going to knock this thing over unless you really smash it. That's really heavy and sturdy. So there's uh, something to think about. If you haven't already organised yourself some steel plates with light stand uh, attachments on, let me just show you that very quickly. Sorry, I hate it when I have to turn away from the camera and the mic. I know that sounds and looks terrible, but I just want to illustrate how that operates. So if I just lift that off, you can see here, there's a little light stand here. You can see here the little mount, and all I have to do is put that on top, a bit of a thumb screwing there, and you're off and running. It only takes a few seconds. So I'll just put this down, there we go. Just make that nice and tight and safe. And of course, I also have the ability to adjust the height angle anywhere I like. So this is what I'm talking about, about diffusion. I think it's very important to get the right diffusion on your lights. Fortunately, with a ring light, in this particular configuration, all the beads run along in like a clock face direction. So there are no straight lines. So this isn't actually never going to be an issue. And the diffusion is really good anyway. But these ones here, where they've got that like very, very defined graph pattern on them, get some diffusion over the front of that so you don't end up with any issues. All right, so the uh, next thing I want to tell you is uh, with something like these, and I did show you these uh, earlier, these are very small lights. They come as two separate little lights, and I've joined them together with a little attachment that they provide, and that gives me the option of having two together. So now, instead of just the 200 beads of LED light, I can now join them together and I end up with 400 beads of LED light. And of course, you can configure them again to the sides here. We can have another two and have 800 LED lights attached. And they're only about $100 a pop, so you can build up your collection in time. But I've never found a need for more than two at a time anyway. That's really quite a bright little unit. And when you look at the size of this big 72 and that together, well, it's not that big a deal in difference. It's not much between it. So it's 400 LEDs in this, but they're actually a little bit brighter than the ones in these. I think they're just compact a little bit tighter. And also the ratio of the battery to the LED beads means that these ones just punch out a little bit more brightness. So they're actually a very good value for money. These bigger ones, of course, are excellent because the bigger the light source is, obviously the softer and more diffused it is by nature. So that's also very handy to have the, the bigger light source, which of course is exactly why I have these. Why do I have a ring light in connection with a square rectangular light? Like, what is that all about? It looks a bit odd and confusing, doesn't it? Well, I've also used ring lights the ring light I have up the top there right now, in the center of this, so it was a double ring light. But what I've done here is I've used this one because it's so much more powerful. This is a really powerful little unit with nearly 700 LEDs. That really pops out some punch. The downside of popping out the punch is it's also very specular. So by having the big diffused ring light around the edge of it, what that does is it softens out the glow of the light. So the fall off of the light now is very soft. So you get a good punch of light, but now that ring light around it really gives you a broad, almost like soft box look to this light without requiring a soft box. So as you can see, the wind can actually pass through this. And because also it's a curved surface around it and quite flat in its profile, it doesn't kick up a lot of wind. So if you're using something like this outside, for example, and you're using that for a light source and you're doing either video or photos, it isn't a giant you know, parachute to suck up the wind and blow over easily. These actually things are, you know, with a good steady light stand and some weights on it, never going to blow over in the wind. So I highly recommend people thinking about some LED lights in case you're filming in windy conditions. 
So I was just illustrating that to you and I thought, you know, another thing I can bring out is uh, an item that I purchased recently. It was a very inexpensive little set of ring lights. Now, as you can see, they're quite tiny, tiny little LED lights. And uh, do they function? Well, yes, they do. And I'll illustrate that, of course, for you. It's only fair I do so. So I just pull out a battery. <clears throat> now, if I may, I just turn that on. And you can see here that's at its full power and strength. And it's not too bad, you know, like that gives some decent light. You can see here at arm's length, uh, it's already, oh, I mean, I've got great illumination here anyway. So this is an extra light source, but as you can see, it actually provides quite a bit of light at a reasonable proximity. And of course you can diffuse it down. You can see me here now on the numbers on the dial, it's saying what level of power it's at. And if I go down to say around 50% here, uh, it's still giving a decent sort of a light. It's all about just how close you are and what, how much light you actually need. But uh, something like this I found to be uh, quite useful uh, for, well, versatile light that just fits in your carry bag. So if you want to stick some lighting just in your, your camera bag, don't want anything to take up a lot of room. So a couple of these and maybe there's a couple of Sony batteries and it's very compact and they're very inexpensive and it's always handy to have something with you. Something is always better than nothing. So I tend to put something like that in my camera bag as a backup and emergency. Now, would I use them as a main light for anything? No, there's no way they're gonna be powerful enough. But should I wanna do a little blog on the spot, something like this can be very useful just to give me some sort of a, either for myself to highlight myself when I'm videoing, because you know what, when you haven't got good lighting when you're taking video, the downside of that is it's very difficult for the camera to get focus on you. So it's sort of hunting for focus because you're not the highest contrast image. Uh, so if you want to make yourself uh, pop with the lighting, then the camera is going to get focus a lot easier. So uh, that's uh, one thing be useful for. If you're filming someone else, you can have a couple of these. You could have one as you know a backlight, and then one as the main forward light, and it's something to illuminate your subject. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. As I say, these things were like uh, thirty dollars. Uh, they're an Andia product. Uh, CM200D. Now I'm not highly recommending them as a high quality product, but I was just recommending that that theme of an item, something that's portable, you can stick it in your camera bag, they're low profile, and that they work is a great idea. And again, this is another brand of product that works with those Sony batteries. So how versatile is that? Again, you're not needing you know, a dozen different brands of batteries lying around and all charged. You've got one set of batteries, they work for everything. Uh, how simple is that? So please uh, do spend some money on lighting. I know it's very sexy and tempting to always be buying new camera gear, such as, you know, lenses and new camera bodies and so on and oh wow wasn't that a great purchase and it's does such a great photo or something but really it's the camera is not taking the image the lighting is making the image for your camera to take so really put your priority into lighting please that's really important uh, especially so with the video i must admit because even though the cameras have great iso capability and that's fantastic that they can do that in low light there is nothing that is equal to good lighting and how great that video will look and particularly how great a better contrast you get and uh, the shaping of the light on the individual or subject uh, makes so much difference to the more professional presentation when you've got good lighting so uh, yeah thumbs up for good lighting uh, another thing I'd like to talk to you about while I'm here is a very incidental little thing, but it's to do with uh, clips and uh, camera straps and brackets and so on. Now I use this, it's a quite a good quality, stretchy, strong, and very secure camera strap. And what I've got here is a situation where I have a stainless steel buckle that uh, as you can see, you put the two together to join it, makes it very simple. And then it has this threading locking clamp to make sure it never comes open on you when you don't want it to. So that's a brilliant idea. So I encourage that. You can buy clips that just clip on and clip off. But the difficulty of that is that while they're twisting around or you're moving about and you're filming, you can actually disengage them and have your camera drop to the ground. The beauty of these sort of rigs, and I'm just going to show you this one as well now, is the other clip that I have to make it a single fastening is this item here. And I'll just bring it off to show you. And uh, what happens here is, yes, it's just a clip on and off hook, but you notice it also has a little locking mechanism here. You just spin that on and now it won't come off. You can't open it. So no matter how much you twist or play with that, it's never gonna let go. And you know the difference between just a simple clip on and off one and th this one with a little safety lock on it to make sure it's secure, it was about an extra 50 cents. 
So wouldn't you be mad not to buy that? You're gonna spend five thousand dollars on a Ronin and your, you know, mirrorless camera, and you're what? You're gonna scrimp fifty cents on a clip and maybe lose it to the ground? Well, you'd have to be crazy. So buy them. They also come in these uh, smaller sizes. This is stainless steel. I don't buy just cheap, nasty metal ones. And again, it has the same configuration where it is just a clip. But then, of course, once it's on. You just flick that around. You don't need any special tools. You don't need pliers with you to make it extra tight. It only needs to be thumb tight. The idea is that it just can't simply knock off and then uh, collapse to the ground. So uh, I use all these sort of rigs to rig up the Ronin when I'm carrying it around so that in case, well, your arms get tired, you know, sometimes you just want to let it go for a sec, rest your arms, give yourself 30 seconds and then pick up and go. But you don't want to necessarily put it down on the ground. It may not be stable surface you might be around water or mush or mud and you don't want to put it into the ground or you can just let it hang off yourself on these good straps and just rest your arms for a few seconds but i can tell you i wouldn't do that unless i had a good strong safety clip to attach it all otherwise i'd be horrified the thing would just snap to the ground on me so it seems like a little thing it's only a few extra cents please buy the good stuff just spend those extra couple of cents so the next subject we're going to skip on to now is going to be the Ronin itself and the lighting rig I got there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my camera angle and if you don't mind I'll do that, change the perspective, make a nice big widescreen shot and then I can stand up and I'll run you through that. <laughs> 